So, here is my PDP-1134A. This machine used to be the head of a Xerox 9700 laser printer. And uh, currently, obviously, minus the laser. But, uh, being a complete 1134 should run just fine. Um, my problem right now is, it doesn't. When the unit is turned on, the system comes up briefly and then holds. Uh, and we can evidence this by watch the run light we can see here that the unit uh, obviously starts up the run light is showing that the system is running and enabled and then it goes out so it's halting the question is, is why is the system halting Right now I should have the system in its minimum runnable configuration. Uh, this of course is so that we are excluding any other possible problems uh, with the cards that I have removed, which are sitting over here. Right now we have a processor board. We have the secondary board for the processor. We have a RAM card here. We have the grant chips, or our flip chips. There's also another little one down here and we have the terminator board uh, this is the expansion back plane usually what you'll have to flip between the uh, primary back plane and the expansion back plane is this little uh, jumper board here or jumper card set the uh, 9202 and you can see in the middle there is a coiled cable that brings the required signals from the primary card uh, sorry the primary back plane to the secondary expansion back plane but Again, as we're running in the minimum set, I have this disconnected. Now, as my understanding goes, uh, we have processor here in between. Although it's kind of hard to see, there is, there it goes, another flip chip. So that should um, allow the bus signals, the grant signals to cross, get to the memory board through the flip chips. This little one, I don't think this is actually required in this slot, but I've got it here just in case. And then the Terminator. Uh, but, obviously, it doesn't work. Run light goes out. So, the question is, why is the run light going out? Uh, I thought we would start by going through the basics and work from there. The first thing I'm going to do is be sure that we're getting the correct voltages off the power supply. Uh, the supply is uh, in this little back portion here, under this cover, although uh, primary access, as I understand it, is from the underside. Uh, but we've got obviously two big fans there. As you can see, I've cleaned out the card cage, all the other boards are sitting over here. Uh, I've only left in the flip chips because these little ones are definitely not coming out. So, let's begin. Um, flip it upside down, access to the power connectors are on the underside. Thankfully they were well in understanding uh, the difficulties in maintaining a machine and with relative ease you can pop off the lower cover. So let's do that right now. Here we have, obviously, the underside of the back plane. We have the smaller primary back plane here, and then the expansion plane. You can see all of the wire wrapping runners here. Uh, important parts are the um, non-processor grant jumpers, which determine whether or not a slot is a, a DMA slot, effectively. Um, these are all in place, I've checked that. These would be we go in for an extreme close-up. So, here we have the non-processor grant jumpers. Uh, we have one here, here, can't see it here, it's buried under this cable run. Another here, again, buried further out. And they run through the entire back plane. If we were to install a DMA card in this bus, we would take the jumper and simply pop it off. Now, in this case, there's no DMA cards 
in the primary bus here. We do actually have one in the secondary in the expansion down here. You can see they're missing There's one here and then they disappear. This is because in these first few slots, uh, or rather not the first slot but the second and third slots, is where the disc controller goes for the CDC. You would expect the disc controllers to do DMA, so it's not there. But on the primaries, it's all there. So, in theory, this should be right. Next, let's check again those voltages. Let's begin. We have our voltmeter here. Uh, up here I have my uh, ground probe connected to the grounds right here. We have the connectors that we're going to check here. The, uh, obviously they're soldered onto the underside of the back plane here. Just in behind, and it's not so easy to see, are the connectors themselves. So they connect to the power supply rails. So, let's begin. See? Lights indicating supplies are up. So, first one we have is blue. This should be minus 15 off the supply. Close enough. Next is grey. This should be plus 15. Also doing well. The next three are battery supplies. Should this unit have a battery back uh, to maintain memory? Uh, it does not have a battery, however, because the battery is missing, the supplies provide this. We should have white, which is positive 15, and green, which will be negative 15. And interestingly, the PDP 11 user manual has these backwards by color, and I'm not sure why. Red, again, this is a battery, should be plus 5. A little high, not too bad. And then brown, this is minus 5. Not so good here. This should be coming off the supply, so this is not a battery voltage. This should certainly be present. Next three are uh, control lines. We should have DC low, AC low, and then the uh, line clock. Uh, obviously, a uh, line clock should not be steady, but um, I'm not actually sure what these should be at, so we'll have to look some further testing there, or uh, documentation reading. We have orange, which should be plus 20. Now this should be nothing. This requires a special power supply module to provide the plus 20 voltage. The plus 20 is used for core memory, which I do not have. Mine is MOS only, so... We shouldn't expect that. And then we should have, again, plus 5. This is coming off the power supplies for TTL voltages. So, aside from our missing minus 5 here, we're not doing too badly. Alrighty, so, I went back to the documentation, and I spoke to my friend in the UK who's been helping me out with this. And there's good news, bad news, and good news. The good news is that the minus 5 volts isn't supposed to be there. The minus 5 is used for core memory, just like the plus 20 that isn't there is. So, not supposed to be minus 5, it's okay to not be there. Bad news is, this means that obviously there's something else wrong. So we're still back wandering around somewhere in the area of square 1. The second part of good news is, however, uh, finding replacement power supplies for this, getting them set up, getting them installed, checking them out, chances of them being any better than the one that we have now, not great. So, not having a bad power supply, having my supplies all check out is definitely a good thing. The next step. Well, as you can see, I've got a bit of extra wiring here. Uh, what's sitting on top of the PDP right now with all the cabling is a pod to my logic analyzer. The next step is find out if we have the bus grounds um, stuck. If there is a card in there that is holding it up when it shouldn't. So that requires the logic analyzer to find out what the bus is actually seeing. And that will be in part two. Thank you much.